Hello. Today I'm going to take a closer look at um, doing some lapping with an abrasive on a oak board. It's just a piece of quarter inch oak. Um, I scribe it in line with a piece of hacksaw blade. I don't do this every time I use it, but as it starts to smooth out, it gives the compound somewhere to catch. So I'll give it a couple of scrapes real quick if it looks like it needs it. I'm going to be having a go at a 3 inch more classic. We'll be using some of the black compound to start, and then we'll finish it off with some of that flex cut gold or any yellow compound made for stainless, or even the white stuff, the, uh, the Ryobi white, the Sears white, those are the ones I'm familiar with. They're a little more refined than the yellow, and so I tend to avoid them unless I am really going for a super high polish. And then I tend to use those on newspaper or a leather strap. I'm doing some experimenting with this uh, lapping on hardwood much more forgiving with the slightly larger grit sizes as you get down into the polishing stuff. It becomes a little more challenging. Um, the larger the abrasive, the less likely the edge is to catch on the wood because the abrasive keeps it off of the surface. Start by doing, I guess, what would technically be the back bevel. Um, this more has been sharpened a couple times. Most of the more classics that I've gotten all had a slight convex to them, maybe a degree or two. So I like to go to work on the back bevel. This is a little more mellow than working a medium grit stone, but it still makes a very toothy edge. Um, in this case, my goal is just to use it for to refine the back bevel, refine the cutting edge a little bit, clean up, clean it up, remove the burr, and then I'll move on to a finer, finer abrasive on a different piece of wood. You could probably just wipe the wood off real well, but I would recommend using different pieces of wood. I use a very similar technique in terms of mechanics for pretty much every stone type or flat media that I work with. And then uh, the only thing I really change up is how I finish it based on the abrasive. Um, some water stones you can finish with a trailing movement. If it's a hard stone like an India or a silicon carbide, you can finish edge leading. This lapping board, very similar to a water stone, so I finish it edge leading, or edge trailing, I mean. But I'll go back and forth for a while. I don't know if you can make that out. You can actually see where the slurry is building up, where it's cutting, and how clean it is right to the cutting edge. And that'll tell you how tight you are how loose. If you're too far back on the shoulder, you'll actually see where it's not making a nice a nice pattern. It doesn't take a lot of practice to get this right. And it's kind of like mixing concrete. You have to have your oil and your abrasive mixture pretty good 
It doesn't have to be perfect, it just can't be <laughs> too far off. And what I find generally is the burr that does form at this grit level can generally be removed on the same board either with a back and forth lapping action or even with some edge trailing if you're very light and the burr is very small, much like a water stone. I want to try to keep this bevel as, as flat as I can, you know, a degree or two maybe of deviation from the shoulder to the cutting edge on a Scandi grind does not concern me. If it gets much beyond that, and as with pretty much all of my edges, unless they're real beater type machetes, I don't like to put micro bevels on if I can avoid it. Some steels are just so tricky you almost can't get a clean deeper without doing some kind of micro bevel, but I don't generally don't like to use them. This method is very fast if your bevel is established. If you're trying to grind or a new bevel or, or change your angle a little bit, you're better off on a stone. But because you're working with a loose abrasive, the, the tendency to even create a burr in the first place is quite a bit reduced. One of the things I like about this, it's relatively forgiving. It's relatively quick. And you can actually integrate this directly into a long-term maintenance strategy. And by that I mean once you have your edge set up, you don't really need to um, scrub it much anymore if you catch it. And if you kind of like a toothy edge, something with a little more bite, you can break this board out, make sure your mix is pretty good, and just kind of edge trail on it anytime it starts to lose a step. And you can restore your edge very quickly with very little steel lost. Rather than having to put it on a stone, reestablish anything, then go to a strop of some sort. Or even putting it on a stone in general to maintain it can a little more metal off than you'd like to see. If you don't use your knife a lot, it's not a big deal. If you use them a lot, anything you can do to maintain it with the least amount of metal removal will keep that knife in your stable for a much longer time period. Another thing about this is, you know, like I said it was forgiving. It's pretty forgiving of pressure because you're pushing, you're working on a, a piece of wood and not a stone. So it's not as hard as like a water stone if you're edge trailing. And it's not as soft as a leather strap or even a piece of paper wrapped over stone. So there's no, no micro convexing at the apex, none of that. Uh, the 
work I've done, it should be fresh to the apex. And it certainly is. I have a very small burr from about the belly down. I'm going to try to get it edge trailing. May or may not work. Might have to go edge leading a little bit and then refine it edge trailing. We'll see. my experience it's better to have this slurry a bit too thick and thin as needed if you start out with it too thin you won't get very good results you'll have a hard time grinding and you'll have a hard time removing the burr There is just the tiniest feathery burr on the end of there. Um, if I had used this a couple times, I'd wipe it off because it's black compound. I can't really tell how dirty it's getting with metal swarf. Obviously, at some point, it'll have such a high percentage that it'll start to take the grinding down a little bit. Um, I'm not too worried about that. And rather than wipe everything off, I'll just throw it in a bag. If it gives me any trouble next time I go to use it, I'll wipe it off and start over again. Okay.